everyone. Welcome to yet another episode of Beyond the Present Podcast. My name is Daniel Mulgan, and today we'll be talking about the importance of dealing effectively with failures and especially rejections when it comes to achieving success in all areas of your life. You see, all of us, we know that rejection hurts and that failure makes us feel bad. I mean, it's quite normal. Whenever you feel uh, perhaps uh, that you're getting closer to some sort of rejection or failure, our initial tendency is to simply give up, back off, and not go any further. And that is exactly why most fortunes are never made, most acquaintances are never brought into your life, and most of the opportunities pass us by because we're afraid to be told no, we're afraid to fail, reject, and just become a loser. <laughs> But ironically, today I want to encourage you to change that mindset and to understand that the biggest winners in this world are simultaneously the biggest losers. Wow, what a concept. Let me repeat that. The biggest winners in this world are simultaneously the biggest losers. You see, everyone you see around you who seem to be a winner type, oh, this guy's a winner. This guy's get it all. This guy's you know, uh, perhaps managed to uh, accumulate so much success and wealth and blah, blah, blah. Well, guess what? The bigger that guy's or that girl's success, the more they have failed and the more they have lost. Let me give you a simple example. Anybody here knows uh, Elon Musk? That's right. We all know him. He's now pretty much the richest guy in the world. I mean, they're toe to with uh, basically uh, Bezos, but I'm pretty sure he's going to get ahead at some point, right? So think of Elon Musk which is uh, the wealthiest, perhaps, you know, maybe the second wealthiest person in the world, uh, the CEO of Tesla and SpaceX. And we know that this guy definitely has made a bunch of money. Not, not so much. I mean, he can definitely live on that, but not enough to uh, show off, basically, right? <laughs> uh, hundreds of billions. So what I'm saying is, did you know that this super winner is actually a huge loser? Do you know that for every project or product that he has made successful, he has made ideas or products that are complete failures? As a matter of fact, do you know that most ideas that Elon Musk ever came up with were neither financially nor technologically successful? Well, guess what? That doesn't matter. Because when we think of Elon Musk, we think about the ideas that he had that worked. We think about Tesla. We think about SpaceX and we think about PayPal, but we don't remember the countless other projects or ideas he came up with that were complete flops. I mean, this, this guy just didn't do anything in those regards. Complete loss of money. I mean, the guy just recently lost a couple billion in one day for a bad decision. We never remember winners for their losses. We only remember them for their wins. And this is the secret that I want to share with you today because that's going to change the way you look at life. Understand, think of all top people in any year saying, well, Dan, you're only talking about business all the time. I'm not a business person. I'm not an entrepreneur. Well, let me tell you about, you know, uh, singers and dancers. So think about like the top celebrities that you really like, whether as a movie star, as a singer. Think about, you know, uh, their tracks and their, you know, songs. If you look at any top singers, you know, overall albums and all the songs they've made, you realize most of their fame and success comes down to a very small number of songs that they have created. I mean, whoever is your most favorite singer or band, you realize they are very famous for a particular specific set of songs. These people are not basically super popular because of every single song they made. Right now, whoever is your most favorite singer or band, go and get a full list of all of their songs. I promise you, even if you are a super fan, you will find no less than half of their songs to be extremely boring and totally irrelevant to you. You'll probably even hate those songs. But guess what? You love them. They're your most favorite singers. They're, they're you know, your most favorite bands. Why is that? Because we remember winners only for their wins. And ironically, we tend to ignore their failures and their losses. And that is a serious mental error because we tend to ignore them for others, but not for ourselves. 
You tend to ignore the fact that, you know, this, your favorite singer has, you know, more than 60% of all of his or her songs are actually quite boring and not even fun. You tend to forget that, you know, entrepreneurs like Elon Musk and Bezos are losing more money and more projects than they're actually succeeding at because we only see the final results. And today, I want to encourage you to change that mindset and to realize that for everything that you win, the chances are you're going to lose a lot more. And this is like the Pareto principle that we have seen applied to success and achievement. It says, most of your attempts at achieving any result will not yield good results. And only a small number of your attempts will do so. But to get to those small numbers, you actually need to keep taking action and not be dissuaded by the failures or by the rejections. Think of, again, Elon Musk. If this guy said, you know what? I made Tesla motor and that's it. I'm not going to move on any further. Well, guess what? Of course, he would have you know, prevented a lot of loss on the way to basically founding uh, SpaceX. But in reality, still, he would have not attained the same level of success. He would have uh, you know, reduced his success by a half if he had not failed along the way on the path to the next best-selling idea that he had, right? The same thing applies to singers. Imagine a singer says, like, you know what? I got, I got four tracks that everybody loves. If I make a new track and it turns out to be trash, then I'm going to lose uh, reputation. Well, guess what? Do you know any singer who only makes four tracks and never makes any new track and then you love them? No. All top singers. Think about, you know, one of my most favorite ones is actually Dua Lipa, right? Do you think like Dua Lipa is going to just make one song and says, you know what? I just made one cool song, all right, and, and I'm, I'm going to stop. No, you can't be a Dua Lipa and just make only one song. You gonna, you're definitely going to have to make more songs, right? The same thing goes with, you know, athletes, Imagine like, I don't know, you were a Phelps, like, okay, okay, listen, man, I, I got, I got two, uh, basically gold medals. I could lose the next one. So why should I, I should just retire. No, I'm going to go for more medals. Now, of course you're going to lose along the way, but more matches, more competitions means eventually more gold medals. Sales. Oh, listen, man, I just, uh, made 10, you know, calls today. I got lucky. I got five of them say Yes. Dude, I, I just sold five units. That's enough for two months. Or you can simply say, you know what? I'm going to keep trying. Oh, yes, I could probably be rejected by the next, uh, I don't know, a few hundred people in, in the process. But if I could sell five more units, man, I'm going to double my income for this month. This approach applies to everything. Let's go to dating. Oh, listen, man, uh, I, I, I just don't want to get rejected by the girls. Or by the boys, I, I don't want to do that. If I go on a date now, and then the guy or the girl turns out to be like pretty weird, then I have wasted my time. Well, guess what? There's no other way for you to find a perfect match if you uh, basically uh, uh, are really serious about this. You have to go on you know, a lot of dates to, to find a perfect match. Not necessarily a super perfect match, but a good match. I mean, there are a lot of good people out there for everybody, right? So maybe you really want to be with an intellectual type of person. Maybe you really want a girl to be athletic and health, you know, uh, conscious, right? So you go on a first date and the girl is very nice, but uh, she's a smoker. Uh, what can I do? Okay, well, you know, she's nice. She's responsive. I could stay here or I could continue looking, but I could be rejected. But, uh, but I don't know. You see, that's, that's the inner dialogue that ultimately compels people to settle down. They get jobs they don't like. Because they're afraid of getting, you know, going on new job interviews. They, uh, you know, get into projects they don't really like so much and they stop growing because they're afraid of failing in new projects. They do not, you know, uh, somehow make a lot of money because they're afraid of losing money. You see, in all areas of life, when you're afraid of failure or rejection, you are sabotaging your success more than anything else. And you are behind the driver's seat. So you are responsible for that, you know, lack of success. So for today, I want to tell you a secret that every successful person does not want you to know. And that is very simple. This is what all super successful people tend to hide unless the media gets in the way or their secret gets out or a friend reveals their secret or somebody sees them. You see, 
most of those around you who seem to have it, you know, have it all basically and have it really, I mean, just in the best level possible, they do not want you to know that most of their success are preceded by lots and lots of failures. They also don't want you to know their ratio of their failure and success. Whether he's a, he or she is, I don't know, a movie star, a singer, an entrepreneur, a guy who is in a good relationship. They don't want you to know of all the failures they had. So the guy who's had it, you know, in business is not going to tell you about all the other business ideas he had and none of them worked. No, he just focuses on that one idea that made him a millionaire. The singer or the artist who is really popular for one or two tracks is not going to tell you about being booed off the stage for all the countless other songs he or she made, right? The guy or the girl who's in a perfect relationship for him or her with a man who is extremely, or a woman who is extremely attractive both from the inside and from the outside, he or she is not going to tell you that uh, he or she was rejected by a lot of guys or went on a lot of bad dates until he or she found they said, no, I mean, it was my first. I mean, you know, every girl in the world loves me. Every guy in the world goes crazy for my hair. They want you to believe these things because that's going to, you know, boost their ego. But that's simply not true. In fact, most of these guys out there who claim to be extremely successful in this and that area, or most of these, you know, ladies who's like, well, every, every guy would go crazy for me. They're not going to tell you about all their, you know, ex you know, relationships and all their failures in life and business, they're not going to tell you about any of that stuff because it's not good for their image. But that is a fact that you need to know or else you're going to feel like hell when you lose your, you know, business, when your, I don't know, partner leaves you, when you face with, you know, financial problems in your life or a health issue. People don't show you these things because that's not good for their image. But just because they don't show you, it doesn't mean that it's not there. And for that reason, I want you to understand that whoever claims to do whatever he does or she does perfectly and that everything he or she does is going to go well is simply trying to, you know, promote him or herself. That's not true. In reality, for every success one person has, he or she has to undergo a lot of failures. For every good match in a relationship, he or she has probably gone on a lot of bad dates and have probably even been rejected by a lot of people whom he or she wanted to be with, but they said, no, you're not my type. They don't want you to know that. They don't want you to know that, yes, now his net worth is about $100, $150 million, but when he first got started, he actually lost half of his initial investment because he didn't know how to flip a property well and ended up losing a lot of money, hiring the, right, you know, the wrong people, or even buying the property in the wrong neighborhood not knowing how to sell it in the future. You see, all of the things that you are undergoing every single day, all problems, all failures, all rejections, all setbacks, please do know that you're not the only one who seems to be experiencing those things. The social media has a way of making us believe that everyone is having it great except for me. Just take a look. Just right now, open your page. You're going to see, oh my, look at these girls. If you're a lady, like, look at these girls that have perfect hair and body. And I'm, I'm not looking like them right now. What's wrong with me? Or if you're a gentleman, oh, look at these guys, man. These guys got all the money in the world. Check, check out this guy's car. But the fact of the matter is that that girl that you are jealous of is not always on vacation and doesn't always look like that. As a matter of fact, you should see her in real life. You should see her in real life to realize how she actually looks without all those, you know, uh, filters on the images and on the, you know, on the lenses. You should see her when she's actually experiencing a major setback and she doesn't have any makeup on. You realize that's just a bunch of show. It's not real. She doesn't always look like that. No girl in my entire life have I ever seen a girl who looked at the exact same level that she looks in her Instagram page. It's just not going to happen. Because it's like their nat- the nature of these platforms to exaggerate. If you're lit, it's to exaggerate your beauty. For gentlemen, how many of those Lamborghinis and cool things that they are selling you on, on social media, are actually real? Well, dude, think about this. If this guy was really so rich, then why is he trying to sell you his course for $2? Have you ever thought about that? If this guy's, you know, driving left and right with Lamborghinis and private jets, 
Why does he want to sell you a course for $2? Have you ever thought about that? If he's so rich, why is he selling things on Instagram? So the fact of the matter is that you need to open up your eyes and understand that people tend to exaggerate their successes. And it's quite normal because it's the nature of the platform and partially human nature. So we want to show off and say, oh, I'm so cool. I'm the best. Oh, yeah. Because, you know, most of us were a little bit insecure. So we need to, you know, have that validation from other people to make us feel good. But just because it seems perfect on the surface, it doesn't mean that it is. Just because this guy seems like a winner, it doesn't mean that he's always winning. So for that reason, you need to take it easy on yourself and to realize that on the way to success, you have to do what it really takes to succeed. And this is what most people don't want you to know. Because if they reveal to you that their financial fortune is a result of lots and lots of effort and lots and lots of failures, and that they tried their best to succeed, but despite all their efforts, still they experienced a lot of setbacks and they made a lot of bad, dumb decisions, but still, thanks to their effort and persistence, actually got through, then that's not going to sound so sexy. So they're not going to tell you that, yeah, I mean... uh, I actually failed a lot, and uh, after about five years of failing, I just got you know I got a lucky break, and then I tried my best, and then I learned, and then I didn't give up, and then I won. No, they're not going to tell you that. It's like, you know what? I was destined for greatness. From the very moment I began working in this business, I knew I'll be the best. Why? Because they want to boost their image. But is that true? Not even close. Not a single successful person that I know has ever gone through life like that, making great decisions one after the other, winning allies ever. No, dude, it's not like that. It's, it's, it's really messy, man. In any area of life that you have seen success, whether you've seen someone, I don't know, doing great in business, somebody acquiring fame as, a, as an artist, a very top performance athlete, or an intellectual sharing great ideas, an inventor coming up with new innovative ways to do things. It, it's always the same process, man. You're going to go through a lot of setbacks. You're going to make a lot of stupid decisions. You will learn from those. You improve yourself. You keep pushing forward. And the ones who really made it are the ones who just could tolerate all these failures. Those uh, singers with those few legendary tracks, they were the ones who could tolerate being booed off the stage for all the other tracks they made that was, you know, just actually horrible. The man or the woman who seems to have the perfect partner, he or she is not going to tell you of all the bad things they had to go through to find that person, of all their previous terrible relationships. They're not going to tell you that. And of course, the entrepreneur is not going to tell you that, oh yeah, I'm a multimillionaire now, but I actually (laughs) grew up in a very poor family and I was obsessively looking to make some money. And that's ultimately why I was supposed to actually fail a lot more because I was looking for an easy way out and I made some, you know, poor choices because of, you know, the fast and easy money. And I could have actually gotten here much faster if I wasn't so dumb enough to try these get rich quick schemes. No, they say, well, I was meant to be rich. So please do understand that on the path to success, academically, financially, in your personal life, health, fitness, whatever area that is important for you, innovation, technology, learning, growing, you need to prepare yourself, number one, for a lot of rejections. Because whatever success you want to go for, the chances are it'll involve other people. Whether you want to get that PhD position, whether you want to get that, you know, investor to put money in your company, whether you want to get that girl or boy say yes, whether you want to, you know, uh, perhaps get the coach to bring you to your team so you can actually become the member of, you know, the national team. In whatever area of success you want to focus on, you will need other people to help you. And more importantly, you need them to say yes to you. And guess what? Not everybody's going to say yes to you. So be prepared for a lot of rejections, a lot of no's. You got to work on yourself. You got to build your self-esteem. Number two, be prepared for a lot of setbacks and failures. You might actually feel like, oh my gosh, I've really tried my best to, uh, you know, get this guy to say yes. And I got into the team. I was playing and I just messed it all up. And my coach put me back (laughs) in the reserve. You see, in life, you want to focus your attention on the long-term, you know, goal, knowing that you will inevitably, inevitably 
have to go through a lot of rejections and failures the same way an athlete inevitably has to put up with the sweat. I mean, is it possible to exercise without sweating? Yeah, but don't call that like a super intense exercise. So yes, you could reduce the number of rejections and failures by simply reducing the scale of your goal. So if you have a goal that is smaller, then obviously you will have to endure fewer failures and fewer rejections. If your goal is to date, I don't know, a 10 out of 10, for example, kind of girl, and you can reduce the number of rejections by bringing your standards down to 7 out of 10, for example. If your goal is to perhaps not fail financially, then it can simply reduce your overall, uh, basically, ambitions and say, you know what, I'm not going to be a, I don't know, uh, I'm not going to reduce my, perhaps, uh, basically, uh, ambitions too much, just a little bit. I'm going to just uh, reduce my goal from, let's say, 10 million to 1 million. Well, yes, now you'll have to endure far fewer, you know, rejections and failures. So basically... As you can see, the only way to reduce the amount of failures and rejections in life is to simply reduce your standards and make the goal smaller. And you know what? There's a perfect way to fully avoid all rejections and you know failures. Do not have any goals. Because if you have no goals, nobody can reject you and you cannot fail because you don't have any goals, right? But is that what you want for yourself? Seriously, is that what you want for yourself? If you are, you know, a sensible person, you know that this is not the case. You want to have your goals big and you want to shoot for the stars. You want to realize your dream. And for that reason, you need to change your perspective and focus on one thing. And that is to try your very best to prepare yourself for lots of failures and lots of rejections on the path towards achieving big goals ambitious goals, lofty goals, and not just some tiny little goals that will never truly satisfy you, right? All right, guys, that's all the time we have for. I hope that this short program inspired you and prepared you for a lot of rejections, a lot of failures on the path to big goals. And of course, if you wanted to know more about this process, you want to reach me directly, you can do so on all major social media platforms as well as on my website at danmulgan.com. It was great seeing you guys. And this was Beyond the Present Podcast. Have a good one.